Hello, sisters in Christ. I pray you are all doing well and you are growing in the Lord each and every day. I want to talk to you all today about suffering and how we are called to suffer with the Lord. The Bible tells us that this is something that we should expect um, as followers of Christ, that we're going to we're going to follow in in the same the same path that Jesus took while he was here. And why suffering is something that pleases God. It's a very simple question to ask ourselves, but um, you know when you're really going through it and you're going through those times of um, of of trials and testing, um, it's easy to say that you know you want to rejoice in that that suffering as the Bible tells us to. But how do we truly, really rejoice in that suffering from our heart? How do we sincerely mean that we rejoice in that suffering, especially when it's, it's just so painful while you're going through it? Um, and this is what the Lord showed me recently, um, because I, I just had my, my three years uh, birthday, I guess you could say, of of being born again, and how immediately once he moved in, the the battle started, and uh, and here I am three years later, and there is still much much suffering that takes place, and it almost seems like, ladies, as you grow in your walk that suffering it it's like it almost just slowly increases and increases inwardly it's an inward there there's a verse in the bible that talks about how we groan within ourselves there is that groaning that we waiting for that adoption of the lord the redemption of our bodies, we are continually groaning within ourselves. And I don't know if you guys can relate to this, but I definitely know exactly what that verse means. Um, Because there is, there's just, there's a joy, there's a peace that comes with the Lord, a peace that comes with that um you know, just even the chastening that the Lord does on us. But there's just that inward where you just don't even have the words to say. You know, you just are, um, you're perplexed, as the Bible says. And um, so how do we really rejoice? How do we understand that God was pleased to crush his son. It was pleasing to him to crush him. I asked the Lord this recently, just like a week ago, and it's true. Whatsoever you ask the Father in the name of his son Jesus, he will give it to you. Because he knows that the things that we ask of him are things that will help us, encourage us to keep going in our walk. And there are times when I'm in prayer, ladies, that I have even found myself saying the same things that Jesus said when he was, he, when he was in the garden before he was arrested and and brutally tortured and for hours and then crucified on the cross. Um, I, I find myself saying sometimes, Lord, please take this cup of suffering from me. Take it from me. Nevertheless, your will be done, Lord, not mine. And 
it, it's an inward constant suffering, ladies, when you're born again. Um, but I wanted to know why, why are you, I, I heard in my spirit that it pleased the father to bruise his son, to crush and, and, and to see his son suffer. So why, why does it please him when he, when he sees us suffer? Because I want to be pleased. I genuinely want to be pleased during this time of suffering. Because I want the Lord's heart. I'm continually after his heart. And uh, so he showed me, after I asked him for this, he, he pretty much immediately gave me an answer. And I, I just had this image in my mind, like oil press. And I didn't really understand totally what that meant. Um, so I looked it up. I, I, I looked up um, just the process of how um, the oil or the, I'm sorry, the olives are harvested, um, which is really interesting that they're harvested in the months of September, October, November. That's when they're picked from the from the the olive trees and i became born again in october and not that i mean people can be born again any month but it was like the lord was speaking directly to me um when i heard this because immediately once those olives are harvested and picked they are then taken and they're put in a um like a, a circular thing where um, they would have a donkey actually um, strapped to a millstone and the millstone would just go in a circular motion and would crush these olives. Now, if you, if you picked these olives and immediately within 24 hours crushed them, that's like the best quality olive oil you can get. That's what's called extra virgin olive oil. It's, it's the best quality. So immediately after they're picked, they're, they're crushed by this millstone. And the olives turn into like a, a paste. And once they're, they're that pasty substance that's just been crushed, <laughs> they then take the paste and they place them in these like woven baskets and they stack them on top of one another, the crushed olives. And then they place something really heavy, like a stone on top and they crush the weight of all of those baskets literally causes um, the the pressing process. So the the olives then go from that paste after being crushed to actual olive oil. And it is so cool when you see the image of all of these baskets stacked on top of each other with the, the um, crushed olives and the oil just seeping. Um, it is just, it's so awesome. Now, why, why is this awesome? Well, that first process of, of, the, of the pressing of the olives creates the oil that they get. They do it three times. They press and crush and beat these oils down three times to get the, um, the best quality oil the first time. Now, that first that first amount of oil that is pressed is the most precious of oil. That was the oil that was considered the first fruits that was taken to the temple and offered to the Lord. And then the, they would press it a second time. And that second press, the oil they would get, they would make, um, they would cook with it. They would make perfumes with it. 
And that was like the second best quality. And then they would press it again a third time. And that third and final time they would press it um, was the least quality, but they would use it for um, oil lamps and um, things like that. Um, so I think about that. I think about the crushing, right? Because it says in Isaiah that he was crushed. He w it, it pleased the Lord to crush and bruise him and that he was wounded for our iniquities. And the, the peace, we receive the peace of his chastisement. And when he was in the garden of Gethsemane praying, another cool thing that, that is involved with this spiritual significance, this analogy. God is so funny. You know, he's just, he's so, um, it's great, you know, the way he does the, the spiritual significance and things. But I don't know. I've always been so drawn to that prayer that God, that Jesus gave to the Father. And, um, and so I found out that Gethsemane actually means olive press. There was a, um, an olive press. It was, it's an olive garden, right? It's on the base of the Mount of Olives. But there was an actual press there in the garden. And Jesus went there continually to, to pray to the Father. And, uh, and he, he prayed three times you know, while the, the disciples were sleeping. And it, it, it's cool to see the analogy there because olives, that they are pressed three times hard. And, um, and we know that the inner suffering that Jesus was going through at that time, you know, not just, he, he was suffering the, just the entire time that he not only was doing his ministry, but I believe from the very beginning, you know, of his of his life here on earth, um, and uh, and why is it, it that that suffering pleases the Lord? You know, when you think of olive oil, you think of something that is just is is precious right olive oil was used to we still use it to this day to anoint brethren when when they're sick like the bible says jesus told us to anoint our heads when we fast um and we see constant examples of of people being anointed on their heads and their feet with that olive oil, <clears throat> excuse me. And so we know that that, that, that sweet smelling savor that the Lord loves, that's, people would bring that, that olive oil to the temple to offer to him. So he was pleased with that olive oil. He is pleased when we are crushed and bruised because it waxes us stronger in spirit. It, it, it just, it does, it strengthens us. We know that tribulation works patience and patience experience and experience works that hope that hope that's in us, that's shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. And so that, we need to hang on to that, ladies. When, when you're in times of, of testing and trials, my suffering is mainly, you know, when these seasons happen, it is at night. And... Um, and that's when I really, really, really go through it. And I need God's strength 
every single moment when when I'm going through this because I'll, all I want to do is just groan and cry out to him because it is painful. And here I am three years being born again. And sometimes it does feel like you never, you, you never get a break, you know? <laughs> it's, the devil is constantly pressing and crushing us but we know that it's for our good we know that it is it is a sweet smelling savor because it produces that that righteousness in us it produces it just produces the holy spirit more and more and more in us and so I just want to, I want to just encourage you ladies today to, um, to just see it that way, see it that way, because the Lord, the Lord doesn't want us to complain when we're in the midst of the crushing process. When we're in the midst of that, we do really truly need to rejoice because not only we are partaking of Christ's suffering, we are drinking from the same cup that he is, that he, he took from, you know, so that too is, that's reason enough for us to, um, to just be, to truly be at peace and trust the Lord during, during this process that's painful. It's physically painful. It's spiritually exhausting. You know, there's a lot of stress there, but we still can't even imagine the stress that Jesus was under and sweating drops of blood that third time he went and prayed. And uh, that, that inward suffering is just... It produces good things in us. It really, truly does. It makes us grow more and more and more. So we know it's his will. We know it's God's will, and it pleases him. You know, just think about that oil that just drips down. And it's just to collect that first, that first, that first um, set of olive oil that was taken to the temple for that, that, um, that offering to God, that took a while. That took two to three hours just to collect the, that vial of oil. It's not a quick thing. This is why we have to have patience. That's why tribulation works patience, right? And then patience works that experience that builds that, that character, that Christ-like character in us. And that experience works hope. It works our faith. It works our trust in him. That is the love of God. That is the love of God that's shed abroad in us. So you can see God's love in your suffering. You can see it there. I want to just share this verse with you, ladies, real quick before I go, because it's really, um, it's really interesting to just see how, even in this verse, it directly aligns with what we go through. 2 Corinthians 4 says, We are troubled on every side yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. So we are continually partaking in that that suffering so his life can be shed abroad in us too 
Now the word troubled, when you translate, we are troubled on every side. And when you translate that in the Greek, it actually means to press as grapes, to press hard upon. And when you look at that image of the donkey dragging this millstone and crushing those olives, these olives are being pressed on at every side. And how fitting is that? That, that completely describes, I know for me, my walk <laughs> it completely sums up the, the troubling at every angle sometimes. I've even said that. Just, you know, that, that is the way that I, I really do feel sometimes. It is a constant, at every angle, I'm being hit by the devil. I'm being pressed upon. But we always have to bear that, uh, that dying that Jesus Christ suffered. We... we are his lambs. You know, he was our sacrifice. He was a sacrifice for for our sins, for us. And now we follow him. And we are a sacrifice as unto the Lord. It's beautiful. It is so beautiful. So I hope this encouraged you all today. And, um, And I'll just leave you with this one last thing. In Ephesians chapter 5, it says, And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. That's the Holy Spirit. That's his sacrifice. And that is what we do daily for the Lord by his mercy on us and his grace on us. So... I love you all. I pray that you continue to just draw your strength from the Lord, especially during times where you're really going through it. You're really being crushed and pressed upon. But just know that it's all for our good. It's all for our good because we love the Lord. And he is a faithful creator. He loves us. And he is pleased with that crushing. He is pleased. I love each and every one of you. Be blessed in Jesus' name. And I will talk to you very soon. Take care.